Serge, thank you again uh, for giving me your time. You know, the previous time, just uh, the video corrupted because of the electricity suddenly cut off, and we are going to start again. It's not problem since technical things can happen always, right? Yeah, thank you very much. So first of all, please introduce yourself. We are going into the conversation. Well, my name is Gustavo Rubén Valenzuela. I'm an actor born in Argentina. However, I have been living for 29 years in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, because of a relationship that I still have. I have a background of theater, but I recently started again my career in 2014 or something when I was a contact for a TV show. As I know about your biography, mm -hmm. uh, you studied finance uh, yeah. on college and then you changed your major to the theater and then acting. Well, uh, was, what happened it was, then? It was meanwhile I was uh, studying uh, finance uh, that I was uh, taking courses, uh, night courses in the in theater school. So I was also getting uh, studies in, in drama and uh, improvisation courses as well. I did that for four or five years and um, I was also uh, discovered uh, when I was 19 in a club in Buenos Aires. There was a photographer that saw something in me and, and he asked me if I wanted to do a test shot and I did that and that's uh, why I started to work in photography as well. It was a very different time like now. There was no internet there was no mobile phone so you had to go everywhere with your uh, portfolio to try to sell yourself. So it was very different. And I did that, but my dream was always to leave Argentina. For me, it was the, like the last country there in the world. There was much more... I speak six languages, so I, I, I wanted to, to move to Europe, where there was these countries very close to each other, very different cultures, very different languages. Uh, so that was my dream. As you know, you know the, the cinema, the, the big the cinema, Cinema is uh, almost in U.S. You know, every everybody which is interested in cinema, mostly they look uh, toward the United States. What happened? You just look toward Europe to starting the art. Because, um, like I said, it was a different time. There was no internet, and it was very difficult to to uh, to get cast for for the film in Argentina. I did mostly theater, and I did uh, also I think one commercial. So I. I I really wanted to move to Europe, to Paris, and there to try my luck there. And I was by the time already 26 when I moved. And I moved because I passed by actual Amsterdam because I did a photo shoot for a, for a magazine there. But I, I wanted to move to uh, move to Paris. The, the reason why I stayed there is because of a relationship. Mm -hmm. Let's do a quick view on careers uh, you've done. From anywhere you want to start, uh, I know you, you've done too many uh, theaters, too many films, but uh, any films you want to mention, uh, I would uh, like to know and talking about. When, when I moved to Amsterdam and, and I got a relationship, then I, at a certain point I said, well, this is not never going to become because I didn't speak Dutch at the time. So I, I but I, I did, I could do finance at the time. So that's why I started to work in a different uh, brand where you get your paycheck uh, at, at the end of every month. So it was kind of security thing. Obviously, all that, that passion that I had for, uh, for acting, it was there. It was just not awake at the time. Then I was called in 2014, 2015, something like that, uh, for a TV show and changed my life because all, all, all the passion wake up again and said, OK, th this is what I really want to do. And everything is changed. Now we have Internet. I can just send, you know, digitally uh, my CV, my pictures, uh, yeah, do a casting. So that's that's how I started and changed everything. And at a certain point, I decided to, to stop with the security, you know, to have a paycheck at the end of the month and to do this full time uh, and, and 100 percent and and it works uh, i think you've done uh, filming uh, during the analog yeah mm -hmm. have you been any uh, any project an uh, analog an uh, analog time you know nowadays everything is digital the camera i mean but just before it was all a negative actually it was a negative uh, analog oh you have mean you that, been okay. in in films which was a negative yeah but negative, I, I didn't yeah. I didn't really work in films. I, I before I did uh, just uh, yeah uh, a photo shoot and 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 it was more related to fashion show and also um, a commercial for television. That, that's that's all I did before. Let's say I moved to to the Netherlands. When I moved to the Netherlands, I already 
Well, my, my first job was for television already. What kind of difference does it have uh, acting in the digital uh, digital camera or analog camera like the negative? I don't think it has a big difference the way of acting. I mean, I think there is a difference when, when you do theater and when you do uh, when you are in front of a camera that there is a difference because in a theater you make everything bigger uh, you have to uh, every everything every gesture every every emotion you have to uh, prolong it to, to the to the last person on the on the on the soul uh, when you are in front of the camera everything is viewable you see everything so uh, you have to learn to 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 give a small dosage of, of your emotions. If you slick like this, it has a different meaning, but it's, it's, you can see everything on the camera. You cannot not see in front of the theater. I think that's the big difference. But to act in front of the camera, I don't think there is any difference. It doesn't matter which camera it is. Uh -huh. You know, because uh, someone, uh, someone says that mm -hmm. acting in front of digital camera, because you can see the playback already after you, you've done the acting, yeah. is much more easier than uh, acting in front of the negative camera because you, you you don't know what what happened in the camera do you agree with that yeah i agree I agree but I, I don't think it has to do from the prospect of acting uh, for example i did a few times um, i act with a camera with virtual reality camera it's like 12 mm -hmm. cameras pointing at you the difference in acting there is no difference but there is a difference in the instructions that you get from the from the director because you have to walk in a certain way you have to position yourself uh, in a certain way in front of the cameras because the cameras are like rotating and pointing at you but you have to allow yourself for the camera to do the work so it's an extra thing that you have to pay attention when you are doing but it doesn't really change the way you are acting that that stays the same i think <laughs> I think that uh, you've got some award in 2017 and 2018. Would you like to talk about this award, uh, acting awards? One of them was for the Mario supporting role. In 2017, I played in a, in a movie in French. It was called Intrus, and then it won uh, an award, a best actor in the Netherlands, and then it was sent the year after to uh, US and won also an award for best actor in LA. Also, we did um, a sequel film. It's a trilogy actually. And I played in, in the first and the second part uh, of Capo di Famiglia as Mario, mm -hmm. the bodyguard of the of the family. And I won uh, also an award for best supporting actor. That's cool. You know, acting is a kind of, you know, it has a difficulty than the other uh, majors in cinema. Because, for example, the cinematographer or the sound guy or set designer, they, they have uh, some expertise and they do their own expert. But for the actors, uh, think is something different you know you have to leave another person you have to act you have to think another guy you know it's very difficult so would you please just talk about the, more about the, this kind the of process. difficulties which acting has? well i think i think uh, acting is is like like a children's play you know children they they have this pure mind and they they believe in their game in what they are playing and that's the same thing that you have to achieve as an actor and there are, i think there are two processes you go through because this this is what you see is is my instrument to work i'm not going to become a different person that i am but i'm just going to use this instrument to make you believe that i am a different person and and, and i'm playing something different and there are two processes that you have to go through you have to go through from the outside to the inside uh, because that you have to go through a transformation to look like somebody different and then to make you believe uh, of very often when i, I have to use um, a costume of, of oh, I am a different character of what I normally am uh, you go through that transformation and the moment that you believe it you start moving differently you start walking differently you as an audience you start to believe it and the other transformation you go you have to go through is from the inside to the outside we're creating this character you are using different techniques different feelings and emotions that you have that, that are part of my person to put it in that character 
character and to make him a different person. I think this is a very important point that you mentioned because some amateurs think that acting is just rolling yourself in front of camera, you know? The amateur says that, okay, be yourself and that's all this uh, good acting. But as you say, and this is uh, the professional one, is that uh, you play someone else and you are not yourself anymore. You are someone else in front of the camera. And yeah, that you is have the to point. create somebody. The most important thing is that I, I won't become somebody else. I'm making you believe that I am somebody else. And that's that's a process you have to go through. I, this is my instrument. I won't, I won't change to somebody else. But the, the transformation I have to go through, through, through wearing different colors, uh, I don't know, a mask, uh, a, a wig, Makeup. whatever. I become somebody else and I walk like somebody different and I, maybe I mm. talk differently. And the thing is that I have to make you believe that I am a different person. Have you ever had any role which was really difficult for you or any hazard? It, it has some hazard for you? You want to talk to anyone? Once I had to play a blind guy and that was mm. a very nice experience because to go through that you use different techniques i am not blind but you have to experience being blind that's what i wanted to do to make my character so mm-hmm. i used contact lens so i couldn't see anything except just shadows i did a lot of research i watched movies i watched people like they was blind and then you create you you learn how to move you let you you walk with your with your body more careful because you cannot mm-hmm. see you do a scene with your eyes oh i also once i, I had to play somebody who was much much, much older than me, like somebody in the 70s. So I had prosthesis on my face and marks that you get when you get old on my face. And then you, I, I had to observe a lot of old people. And, and I realized, for example, that your voice doesn't change much when you are young and then when you are old. It doesn't change much. You, you, you still have about the same tone of voice. But because of, of the experience of your body, you, you get more careful. You walk differently. You are more careful with the steps that you make uh, your body is not that flexible anymore and you are more careful and that, that's and you are slower that, that's what mm-hmm. happens when you get older you use method acting yeah like that's one, one of the things it, it depends it depends what it works for you for example in that cases I will use method acting but in another cases for example if I have to cry I prefer a lot of people use method acting and look for something that has hurt you in real life and use that emotion to project it it doesn't work for me very much because in my real life I, I don't cry very much it's very difficult for me to cry but I just use p- purely uh, the, the, the the muscles of my eyes and then I try to look uh, and, and, and to have the feeling that I'm really crying and, and it works for me it's, it's uh, purely yeah. physical so you use it, uh, you yeah. use technically not thinking yeah. about that as I remember we just previously talked tell, you told me about playing a character which has a son in the yeah. real life you don't have any so it was a difficult character you played for. Uh, could you talk about this guy? Yeah, character? I played once in a movie in Arabic. Uh, mm-hmm. It was called Etahail, and it's, it's about this refugee uh, man with his daughter. It's actually, she's dying, and it reflects two parts of their lives. When when they were in a healthy life, let's say, and then when in, in this refugee, when they have lost everything, and they, even their lives, they, they, they are in danger. It was one of the most beautiful things that they had to do. Uh, as an actor but also I'm not a father I don't have a child so you have also to project that in your acting the way you you treat the little girl and, and the way you look at her as a father is, is uh, something that you have to work on it and it was one of the, the most challenges but also the most beautiful things I had I, I was able to do you know be, rehearsal uh, did you have any for example the connection with that girl as your daughter you know experiencing a uh, fathership with her as your daughter or now in your rehearsal yeah before the yeah show. we were doing rehearsals and also meanwhile we were waiting the set was ready uh, we were playing she was playing because she was like a little girl as, as well in in mm-hmm. real life it was different than what the camera was on than when she was uh, in her real life she was like a little girl so we were just playing and that helps a lot i always try to make connections with the actors and play be- 
very few times, very few times it happens that I didn't spoke to the person at all and then we have to drum, we have to act. Mm. It happens to me also for a Belgian film. That was also very weird. It was, it was actually my first naked scene that I had to do. Mm. It was for a, for an action film in Belgium. And we haven't met with the actress that, that we went to bed, actually. Mm. We we're, were playing two ministers that we were having a secret affair. But we just Skype with each other and then we talk and then we met and we did the same. So you always have to find some kind of connection. It happens to me very few times that I, I didn't know the other person and I didn't met it before. So you have barely time to, to make that connect. Uh, does the, you know, the other actors rolling, you know, or acting affects on you or no? You just separate yourself from the others. It means that, for example, there is a scene, there is too many actors, they, they, act, they are acting. Does they affect on you and your and, and your acting or not? Well, I'm, I'm very focused on what I'm doing, but of course you have to be very sensitive to everything that happens around you. You have to react to, to everything that happens. If you don't, it means that you are not really believable in what you're doing. So <laughs> I think one of the most important and scenes is that you have to listen very carefully to the actor that you have in front of you. Many times it happens that somebody forget the lines or, or say something different or improvise on that mm. because he forgot the lines and you have to be able to react to that but exactly mm. react to make it believable that you don't even notice as, as an audience that there was some change on the script. So mm. you, you always have to be able to react to what is happening around I, you. I, I want to tell you one of my own experience as I yeah. think my manager is not act. I have some experience of act. Uh, there was a film I was a director assistant and scheduling the movie. There was a scene they asked me to act in front of one of the famous and professional actresses. I just lost myself and I got nervous because she was professional. At that, they recorded. The director told me, okay, cut. Told me, Payam, you are not good. You, are, uh, you know, the actress helped me to act in that scene because I was amateur and she was professional. Yeah. She is on me and told me, okay, be relaxed. Just imagine I'm like you, amateur, and we are talking together just like friends. That really helped me. Have you have any experience of working with am uh, amateur actors or actresses? And what are you going to do with that thing? I, I don't have a lot of experience lately because I'm, I'm also, on the moment, I'm trying to work only professionally. But there was times, and there are some times, that I make exceptions. For example, I know a few directors that they are in the film school and they are finishing and they have to do their last project and they ask me can you help me with that? Of course, you are as a film uh, maker, you are the future of, of this industry. Yeah, I want to help you. So I have done some films, but they are the, the end films for them to graduate and to get the diploma. Sometimes you have to work with two things, with two different things. You have to work with actors that they are not I don't like to call them amateurs, not as experienced as, as I am, for example. How did you manage these things? with working with actors which as you say not experience there is no difference between you know, the contrast is too much because uh, you have experience you've done too many jobs but they are not they are, maybe they are at first time uh, in front of the yeah. camera so how you feel this contrast what I do is some, sometimes not always it depends on the case but sometimes I try to help it with, with a very a small trick that I learned in theater school some kind of exercise to get into the mood of the character or the situation. Sometimes we do that or sometimes I just talk to them and go through the through the scene with the director as well. Yeah, it depends on the case, but mostly you, you try to do it that way. And also when you work with somebody who is in the film school, mostly unless they are studying to be a director, sometimes I've helped somebody who is a DOP, director of photography, and then they don't have that much experience working with actors. You notice that you are not really directed. So that you have to do your own thing and help the other one to get there. Let me just a little bit flashback to yeah. the time which there wasn't any internet, there wasn't social media, there was nothing. How did you find people? How did you find your uh, way in dur during that time, which was uh, difficult? It is almost impossible to imagine how it was, but also if I try to remember, it sounds funny to me, but most of the network, you have to do it through the theater school because then you know other actors, you know, uh, other actors and professors that they are maybe higher or lower in the level that you are. That's the network that now we do it through the social media. You did it in person at the time. So it was a very different time. Let me just talk about some
some films you've done. You have, you've done feature film named with an Italian name, Pablo di Famiglio, something like that, which has a trilogy. Which is a trilogy. Oh, oh yeah, the, the Capo di Famiglia. It's, it's just the boss of the family. Yeah. You acted for the second part, yeah? Yeah, I did the first and the second part. Would you like to talk about this film? Well, the scene is that uh, this is the initiative of the main character who, who plays there. He is a, is an actor, but is also a producer, and he decided to do like a trilogy of the Capo di Famiglia. So he wrote the story. It was at the time uh, somebody I knew. So he asked me, "Would you like to do an audition?" And I said, "Okay, yes, I will do an audition." So I did an audition for a different character. And when they saw the audition, they called me after 15 minutes or something, and they gave me a bigger role that was the role of Mario, the bodyguard of family. So I play in the first part and the second part. I did not wanted to go further because, well, especially with the pandemic and everything, my career took a different direction. This is an independent independent film that mostly goes sent to, to film festivals all over the world. But I just wanted to do something different with, with my career. I just want to do more professional work. That Directed to television and cinema and films, uh, commercials, rather than than independent films. That's why I decided not to go further. And, and also, I saw that you you've done some comedy. Then was Deja Vu. Yeah. Deja Vu. And yeah. There is a film named Deja Vu made by Tony Scott. Have you seen this film? It's something that repeats all the time. There is a film named Deja Vu produced by Tony Scott. I really like this film. I saw this film twice, three times, you know. And also, I really like Denzel Washington in that film yeah he was very amazing he's and, a very good actor uh, yes he's very good actor w what is the difference between acting as a comedy and the other part of the cinema I think that making comedy is very difficult because uh, it's much more easier to touch somebody with feelings with a drama make somebody cry than make somebody laugh so that's why I prefer rather than comedy I prefer black comedy because black comedy you play very serious but in, in a ridiculous situation that make you laugh and that, that's what I love. Actually, I, I won two awards with Intrus, that is a black comedy. And Deja Vu, I played the role of um, this old guy. He used to be very famous as a singer, but now he's uh, just a presenter of, of a TV program. And he's like obsessed with this young girl. He's behind this young girl all the time. And she doesn't want to do anything with him. She's obsessed with another guy. And the guy also, he's not, he has want nothing to do with her. So it's, it's a Deja Vu scene that happens. And it's, it's quite funny because it play very seriously. But then you get a lot of this very strange and happy and yeah, very funny situation. For acting in comedy films, what is the difference, you know, what do you do at that moment to make people at the same time laugh and at the same time take you serious, you know, as that character? I, I think you have to have a certain kind of humor in yourself and, and be funny naturally. You use that in your play. I think it, the, the trick is uh, to do something very, very serious that you believe in that make the other person say, that's ridiculous and, and make you laugh. But, but I mean, it means for yourself it's com uh, completely serious, but for the others it's kind of insane. For example, when when we were filming intros, there was the, the story is is a drama actually. It's, it's this guy that has well, it's, it's not tell in the film, but actually he has had something, lost somebody, his partner of something. So he decided to get into the house and never go out. He just stays all the time at home. Uh, at a certain point appears this ghost the, you know like like the children see the ghost with the, with the white uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kid. so appears this ghost and he didn't real he doesn't realize that he's the ghost of himself because he doesn't want to to confront what is happening to him he goes through different scenes like like he was scared at the time and then thinking what the fuck is this and then try to exorcise even him and then uh, exorcism so it sounds like something really ridiculous when you go to a cross you know against the against ghost but he does it convincingly and, and very seriously so that's that's the, the the scene when you do something very serious but it's something so, so ridiculous that you have to laugh about it there is also a part when he breaks and he really cries because he, he had enough of the ghost and he wants him to to leave to go away i think it would be accurate to say that a black comedy is based on a drama but make you laugh because of the situation that it gets black, com black comedy is 
kind of criticizing to the society, like uh, Charlie Chaplin told them. Yeah, exactly. The whole life I try to uh, make people to understand what they love. Yeah, they, exactly. Exactly like you are saying. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Okay, there, uh, you know, there, there was a workshop you joined uh, in 2017, 2018. It was a Meisner, yeah? Meisner. Yeah, Meisner. Meisner uh, technique. Could you tell me more about this technique? What is it? Well, I, I think it's, the, it's, it's based on place truthful of what you are playing. So in a way that so you are playing natural, but so natural that you believe in what you are saying. And that's, that's the whole idea behind. I think as an actor, you never le stop learning and you have to improve yourself with workshops, for example, to go further. So I also did uh, the refocus mode method. And that, that means that you are refocus yourself in the actor that you have in front of you and playing as natural as possible. One thing, for example, when I learned text, I learned flat without any intonations, without any, any purpose. For example, if I have to say to you, I am sad today, so I just learned it. The lines are, I am sad today. But then when you are playing it, actually, I can tell you, I am sad today. Or I can tell you if I am ironic, yeah, I'm really sad today. So you play it on the moment, but you play it truthfully to the situation. Does something change inside you when you are working as this method? Or it means it that something changes inside? Because it uh, says that it comes from inside to outside. Yeah. Uh, so um, how come? You normally use from yourself, like your own emotions, and then you project that through a character. I saw that you have an experience of working for animation, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. How was that experience, you know? Imagine yourself as an animated character. How was that? Well, it's different like that. I have done in the past a few times voiceover and dubbing. So that means that you're yeah, working as an actor with your voice, projecting your emotions with your voice. And this time I did the voice of a cartoon, actually. It's a dinosaur oh. that plays in a band. And it was wow. it was really, really fun because it happens in a studio. You actually you don't see the cartoons because they, they made the cartoons through your voice. They have the, the storyboard and they adapt the cartoons to your voice live to that character. So I knew I have seen who my character looked like, and then you imagine, it, and then you project the voice. And, uh, it was really, really yeah, fun. Amazing. You know, it's, uh, let's talk a little more about this experience because it's kind of amazing. You know, just yeah. uh, how could you approach to the dinosaur, you know, animated dinosaur, and feel it so you could bring this character to the life because this is animation, and you want to bring it to the life so the child or any uh, any kind of audiences could understand this character. Could talk this well, it, it was it was not a monologue, so you are you are actually playing in the studio. I playing with a girl who was a very young actress and she plays a little girl in, in the mm -hmm. in the cartoon is a little dinosaur. The story is about this little girl, this dinosaur, that she wants to go, to build up a relationship with her father. And her father works in a, uh, is the lead singer of a band. But they don't have a relationship really. And so she's trying to build up that relation. And my character is, is one of the dinosaurs, the guitarist that played in the band. So for her, it's easier to approach to my character for advice than to her father. So we were actually playing in the studio with, with this little girl. So um, wow. yeah, and, and I was giving her advice and everything. So it's, it's actually, it, it, it sounds like something very untouchable, very, very, you know, that is not, that you can materialize, but we were actually playing with each other. So it's, for me, it's, it's like playing without camera. It's, wow. it's with your voice more. Ah, yes, yes. Somewhere you just wrote on Instagram what happens when an actor is prohibited from using any of his senses on photography project. There was a, a, a photography project. Uh, the photographer wanted not me not to use any of the sense and still see if I can produce something interesting in a photography. So that, that was the assignment. And then she covered all my sense, like my ears, like uh, my nose, my mouth, and I could they use my hands and uh, the photography that you saw on the on the Instagram uh, is I, the result of that yeah. a lot of people think that you are only acting when you are delivering lines and that's not true you are acting as well with your body and with, with your, your you are saying a lot when you are even not saying any words mm -hmm. so I, I can be looking at you and, with a, with, and, and do something like that and then it has a meaning I'm, I'm saying something to you without saying anything so that's what, what 
what it was about, to say something yeah. without saying Without words. saying any single yeah. words. Exactly. Yeah. It's a body language, kind yeah, of body exactly. language. You just wrote a very important sentence. Being actor means to learn dealing with rejecting and never giving up. What, what is it about? As an actor, you, you are going to have a lot of rejects, for sure. You are going to hear a thousand times no. And it doesn't mean that it's something personal for you, that you are doing something wrong. Sometimes I, I have done auditions for a role and I said, I leave the room and the director is with a big smile and, and I have the feeling that I have done everything right. And then I don't get the part. And that's because you not always fit in the that idea that the, the director has in his mind or the filmmaker or you are just not fitting with the rest of the cast. And it, mm -hmm. it does nothing really personal. It's just the way it is. Sometimes you can surprise the director and say, oh, wow, he did something different. Maybe I want to go that direction. But that doesn't happen every time. So you have to grow a very thick skin because you are going to have a lot of no's. You, I'm actually living for the yes. When people say yes, I got 100% because that's what I want to do. And that's the role that is for me. But you can, as an actor, you cannot do everything. There's going to be a lot of roles where you don't fit. Uh, so you have to be able to never give up and go further this, this is your is a passion work when you make your 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 work your passion you should never give up that is what you make you it happy you say that an actor or actress should have self-control on re any rejections any bad comments anybody was yeah every everybody reacts different to rejection of course but i mean you just you have to understand that the reje rejection in this business is not something personal it's just because you are not the right person for this job because mm -hmm. the director has somebody else in mind maybe so but there, there goes there is going to be another project where you are going to be the right fit so you just wrote that you are believing in a kind of art it starts in heart passion is emotional uh, passion is essential ingredient acting is transforming uh, what does it mean i mean there, there are two ways to create the character one is when you go from the outside to the inside when you you are you wear a custom and you start walking differently and, and then the audience believing what they are seeing and the other one is when you have to work from the inside to the outside so you have to use whatever you have in you plus the research that you do to create a character for example if I want to play somebody who is really really poor uh, which is different to me that, that uh, I have a house <laughs> I'm not really really poor you have to find in yourself what kind of element do you know you can use for that character plus your research and then put it that in a character. That is the passion of, that you have to have for this uh, profession. And you wrote that uh, how it would be someone to be someone else's skin. That's the way, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Gustav, if you had a time machine and you could travel through the time, for example, just imagine you could travel to the past. What yeah. would you change? Do you change anything or no? Just yeah, change I, the will, thing. I will change something. I do think that things happen for a reason and there is a time Time for everything but if I could change something I could I gave up a little bit this this profession uh, when I moved to, to Holland because I didn't speak the language because I didn't realize that everything was changing that we had internet at a certain point yeah I will change the whole world uh, so at that time I thought okay this is never going to become and now at this age I realized that to act it doesn't depend on the name because I can still work as an actor and portray different characters to I die. But what I mean is if I could have started earlier, I would have had more time to do this, what, what I love to do. So I realize that now I'm running out of time in a way. Let's hope that I, I can still work for, I don't know, live for 20, 30 years, but I don't know. But uh, may, may, maybe you, you have to just concise the time and work in much more, more films. I'm doing my best. <laughs> yeah. Some people, mostly actors, say that if I come back, uh, I, I I won't accept this film. If I come back, I won't play an uh, act for that theater. Uh, do you have any, this kind of regression? No. I, I know I have played, like, I think every every actor has that. I have played for some films that they really, really were really crap, really bad. Uh, I think mm -hmm. it happened. To tell you an example, I don't think that Capo di Famiglia 2 was a very good film. I think it was worse than the part one. But mm -hmm. still, I want an award as, as best supporting actor. And that's because you never have to give up. Even mm -hmm. if you play in a bad movie, which 
it will happen eventually. You, you can never know if you are accepting a role in a movie that is going to be very successful or uh -huh. is going to be a complete flop. So, yeah. but you always have to give 100%. And that's what happened with Capo de Familia too. I did my 100% and I, it pay off. But I, I don't think it's a good movie as it was part one. So acting for a movie is kind of different than acting for a theater. Yeah. One of them you just mentioned because the, you in theater you exaggerating everything yeah, because exactly. you have to show your yourself to the end yeah. of the salon. But the, the other difference, I think, in theater, you have continuity of yeah. acting, you know? For example, you start the... Opportunity. A, yeah, this is opportunity. Yeah. For example, the, the theater starts at the moment and ends at the another moment. And during yeah. this time, you continue acting for your role. But in this in cinema, maybe, for example, this is a scene and uh, you act the first of the scene today and the other part one week later. Or yeah. in Maybe you told me I, you have I tell you what happened. I tell you what happened with Deja Vu. We started to film before the pandemic. And it was, I think, October 2019 or something, when my character gets caught in a fight. So he got a punch of his nose and started bleeding. And he goes to the toilet. And then he, he clean it. And then he take a light. And then he go out to the party. But when he go out, we had the pandemic in the middle. So that happens. The next scene happens like eight, nine, nine months after that. Oh and I god. was like, oh my god, how are we going to do with the continuity? Because, you know, with the pandemic, I think what I put, I, I think a couple of kilos more, I look different to me. <laughs> so, yeah, we have the same clothes, we have the same character, but I I think the most important thing is to keep the a, a sense uh, of, of your character, to really know who your character is and, and play with it. Uh, actually, with this character, I made from all the beginning an, an Irish accent. I used to live, I lived for one year in Ireland, I got the accent. So this character speaks all the time in English with an English accent. And that helped as well a lot for the continuity because you realize that when you are speaking Irish, you are you are not Gustavo anymore. You are that character. You know, it's kind of difficult because, uh, for example, you have these two kind of uh, continuity, continuity of emotion and continuity of physical, physics. Yeah, yeah. How could you manage to stick these together and, for example, you act this thing today and and the other scene uh, one week later and you keep this continuity emotionally and physically it's difficult but you have you have to it's part of it the job you have to find by, it. by rehearsing or no experiencing or no it's it's like you create this character and you you have an idea of what how he looks like how he reacts how he speaks how he walks and then you have to keep that that is your pace and the situation could be different the moment would be different but you still have to play this character Character and, and he still has his ways and the way he reacts to the situation. So I think that's the base that you have to keep. During this pandemic, which is not yet completed, and we yeah. don't we don't know when it would be a stop. What did you do and how could you manage these times which most of them was locked down? Well, actually, just before the pandemic, I signed a contract uh, with my two agents, one in England and one in Madrid, because I wanted to pursue a more international career. Mm. But I was quite lucky because all the international projects, they stopped at a certain point. So I had auditions, but they, they always prefer to work with people locally than, than to travel. But I was lucky because I still had work. I, I could work in the Netherlands. I, I still work uh, for television. I was working for a TV series as well. And I got to play in a commercial in Kiev. So I, I still had work. So I managed to do that. And also mm -hmm. during the pandemic, I was still finishing filming for Deja Vu as well. Uh, for the last thing, for the people which they are going to start entering this industry as a, as, a, as an actor, what do you recommend? What, what should they do? And First of all, I would recommend to get a base because a lot of people think, uh, oh yeah, Act, acting is everybody can be an actor but it's not like that you have to have a certain technique a certain base because it's a very competitive market there are a lot of good actors so you have to have skills for that so I would recommend to, to do or, or a theater course or a workshop but you have a base for that secondly you are going to get a lot of no 
a lot of projects grew a, a thick skin and never give up never is that your passion just go for it go for it yes. uh, it is possible to to make a living and to become but it's a lot of hard work and takes time so if you are really wanted go for it thank you very much and as i know you can uh, speak in so many languages could you just say some words about the acting in for example some other languages like spanish which is your native and mother tongue and the other languages which you are not? Sure, I will say it in Spanish and in Dutch. So in Spanish it would be Ve por lo que quieres que es tu pasión y nunca te des por vencido. And in Dutch, how for about your passion is en echt nooit, nooit geeft op. And what is it then in English? In English it would be Go for what your passion is and never ever give up. Thank you very much, Gustav. And you're really, really, really nice guy. And this is my honor to, to talking with you. And honesty and honesty, I really enjoy it. And this conversation that was very really useful also for myself really thank you thank you very much for for the invitation and, and for the this interview uh, i think the second part went better than the first part uh, oh, yeah. yeah and and yeah thank you very much it was my pleasure to do this thank you so much